Hello, following on from my video overview of Main WP, I received some questions about client reports. So I thought I'd do a similar video and in this I'd be able to talk about some of the new options that are available. There is a blog post that goes with this video and I think the first thing I should mention is that the client reports are part of the pro package that comes with Main WP. Some people who were asking me about reports already have that pro package, they have their life deal, but they're not using Main WP because of client reports. So I'm hoping this video might encourage some of those to take a second look. And if you are someone who is considering buying at least the lifetime deal, let me just point out that there is this 25% off coupon which is Digital Freedoms, all one word, and it is the best deal that is available, and I really don't know how much longer I will have this coupon code available for. So since the beginning of Main WP, there has been a client report extension. The original one is the one that I'm still using these days. And it's great in terms of the data that it will provide for clients. And you can present this in lots of different ways via what they call tokens, which you add into your report. So for example, if you're talking about plugins, it will let you know what's been activated, deactivated. It will do a number of count of all of the plugins that have been updated. It will tell you the version number, something has been updated to something else and the, the plugin name. Lots of different variations about how you can present different data and lots of it. But what it's not so great on is the styling and the layout, the presentation of it, because largely you're working with something similar to the classic editor in the back end of WordPress in order to create these. So you can add in some media like some photos and you can turn your titles into headers and do some basic styling. But I guess for some people who are considering main WP, moving away from a SaaS solution like Manage WP, where the reports are very nicely styled from the beginning, this is quite different. And I think that's probably true with a solution like this, this self-hosted one that you own solution. You can do what you like with it, but of course, sometimes you have to put some more work into it. But there is now, I think, perhaps a solution for those people who want something that looks nice straight away. And that is this new extension, which is called Pro Reports, which is presently in beta as I'm recording this. And it will just lay things out in a much easier way. So you can select between some templates which they've set up. There are four at the moment. And these are little thumbnails of the kind of thing that was set up. In fact, I can show you it here being previewed. So with this, you can just select some of your branding colors, update your logos, change the image over here, and you can decide which type of content you're going to turn on and off. So it's really easy to get out a quick report. But there is one consideration, if I'm understanding this correctly, with the original client reports, you are sending out largely an email. You can actually save these reports as a PDF, but it's really an email. And with the pro reports it is sending out an email again but attached to that is your pdf of the reports that you're creating so they are essentially different as i put in this post here mostly these are working in the very same way and you can use them in conjunction with each other if you like you can create as many different reports as you like so you could just use one if you wanted for sending out uh, one-off reports to, and the other could be just your regular monthly report on all automation. So it's kind of up to you, but there are two sort of fundamentally different choices. What's more exciting to me, and I think I'll try and follow this up at some point when I find some time, is that really this new one is more like a templating engine. If you're somebody who's quite comfortable with taking one of their PHP templates and changing some of the HTML and CSS, and you kind of know how to find the tokens that are available to both of these and used in the client reports, you can create your own kind of new template and, and create variations. Maybe the community will get on board with this. Certainly a friend of mine was talking about whether you could actually create these using a page builder. So there might be a lot more that will happen on this. So I think it's quite exciting what's going on. I hope to return to it and maybe even also look at this, which is what I use at the moment. Now, I will say that really you've always been able to style these. It just needs a bit of imagination. There is somebody in the community, a guy called Josh 
Joshua Vandekar. I'm just going to check I've got that right. Yes, Vandekar. Okay. Uh, he has shared a couple of blog posts with how he set up his own report. So this is the original client report, sending out the emails. He's added in some images and he shows you how he set his up. And he did one earlier as well where it shows the same thing so these are there for inspiration so there's a lot you can do if you just want the email to go out directly and of course there's a lot more you can do with the templating for the rest of this video i think i'll just talk about how this works how it gets the information that is used in these tokens and to do that you do need to install a plugin which is free on the wordpress repository the main wp child reports plugin to all of your sites of course that's not a big thing if you're using main wp you can bulk upload all of those and you don't need to be concerned about the showing for clients because you can if you like you can use the branding extension if you've got the pro version and hide um, the reports and the main child plugin from so they don't see them at all so you can do all of that now it's worth mentioning this because even if there wasn't main wp i would probably recommend the plugin that this was forked from so when i started with main wp it was using the stream plugin and it needed to because it didn't work entirely they needed to fork it and make it work but they've credited it here and this is an excellent plugin if you are somebody who has to manage client sites because if you say give someone an administrator role they can turn on and off deactivate your plugins if you like so it's really handy to have this and it works with the client reports let me just show you this it gives you all the kind of details of what the major things that are happening in WordPress so you can kind of sort on your clients and find out which users are doing certain things so it's the first place that I go to if there's an unexpected failure somewhere and you know, the, the first time I needed to do that it literally was that the client had uh, deactivated the plugin so okay so this actually once you've added the client report or the child report plugin it adds itself as tabs to the main WP child so it's all in the same place here this is where you can find out what's been going on in your plugin and this is the information that's gathered that uh, is used with the tokens and I'll go to the next tab which I've got on a tab here because it's worth checking this out because here you can enable it so it doesn't report the updates on the the child plugins from here you can set how long you want to retain the information in the database obviously if you left this to no time at all then it's just going to get a very busy database yeah i think it's set to 100 by default so you might want to change that something which i really haven't looked at or maybe wasn't there in the first place because i haven't set it is this ability to add in rules on what you want to exclude from the child report so in simple terms, I often give people an editor role and here I could just add this in and it would actually remove all of the actions that they did. So it would only report on the things that I did, not what they did as well. Uh, generally, it's not so relevant because they're not updating anything in my case, so I don't need it. But there's a lot you can do with this, so it's definitely worth checking out that. There's something here which stops uh, uh, kind of comment flooding so I, I guess it removes all the sort of duplications if somebody is flooding you out if that's the kind of thing that you report in your templates and I think that pretty much covers it so you can find the tokens the other side of things on the reports there is a link actually in main WP to tokens but it doesn't seem to include them all the documentation on main WP is pretty good actually so this is the one that's on the client report extension and it lists all the available tokens in fact on the pro reports there is the kind of same tokens there available for that but it's just set under that section as well and I can't run through all of these but I kind of give you some flavor of all the different ways you can show the information almost anything that's been done in WordPress is being measured by main WP and then on top of that it depends on what kind of extensions that you're going to add so if you've connected say with an extension to Google Analytics you're going to have that information available to show if you've connected through their uptime extension you can connect to uptime robot and it's going to provide all that information i've used it with some of the plugins so wordfence i've even outputted in some of the earlier reports all of the scans and uh, some of the results of those scans from wordfence so anyway just take a look through this this is all the stuff you can do and also use as well in pro reports as well for making those templates let me show you the original 
client report interface. Ah, um, on this tab here. So this is previewing the report that I'm actually sending out at the moment. Um, it's really basic. I'm just sending out plugin updates with my kind of header on there and uh, theme updates. The rest of it is fairly static information because I've changed things around. And it used to be a little bit more fancier than this, but I've kind of realized, and I guess this is just human behavior, it's certainly the way that I behave. After you've received an email a few times and you know that there's nothing that's in there that means that you have to do some kind of action, you're probably likely to ignore it because there's other things to get on with. And I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. I haven't measured this on clients, but a few times when I used to send these out manually, I used to put in some free offers for people that I thought were very appealing, but I got very little in terms of returns, only from the new people. So that probably gave me an indication that most people were not looking at them. So I've kept it simple, but I think I'm going to uh, take another look and update them a little bit. But I can just show you on the client reports how this works. Both of them are fairly similar in terms of the back end here. You can create as many reports as you like. You determine whether you want it to be a one-time report or recurring report. You call them whatever you like. You set here where you're sending it from. It uses these tokens which are set up when you set up a, a site. So you've got places to set up the company name and the client name and all of that. And then you can use these tokens here. And the same as well for using these in the subject. And what you've just seen is just written here. So we have a kind of... A, closer and a, an opener for opener and a closer for this area and this is plugin name so it will spin out depending on which side all of the plugin names that are there and alongside this is going to add in the update date for all of this and doing the same with the themes but there's a lot more ways I could present this information um, when it comes to this section you've got three sections you've got a header a body and a footer all of these which can be saved as a template so you can mix and match as your using different setups and reports. I don't really have that much. I do use them for the one-off reports and have a different layout for those, but that's about it. And that's all I can really say. I mean, what you can do is, as I've shown, you can preview the report and it will show you. And in fact, it will preview all of the reports which are active. So with main WP, you can put all of your sites into different groups so you can have a different report going for that different group section we actually do section them up but they get the same report but they're grouped according to the plan that they are on or i can just deselect or select which ones i want to look at so you can preview so if you're concerned about any particular site going out say you think you might have forgotten to add in the report um, plug in so it's not going to come back with any returns you can check that out before you can just go and select that one preview it and you can see it or you can see all of them you can do a test email you can download this as a PDF and you can just send from there so I think that's pretty much all I can cover on this on this basic overview let's take a look at the pro reports and here it is it looks pretty much the same so most of the setup is the same you can lead on to the tokens all of them aren't there at the moment. Same thing with the grouping. What's different here is that you get to choose at the moment the templates. And if you create your own, obviously, that would become available here. It gives a little preview of what that does. And this is much easier to use for anybody who's starting off here because you can set the custom content that's going in your email. With here, you can use the short codes as well. Then you get to decide what kind of content is going to be displayed within these. So it's laid out for you. You don't need to do any thinking. It's decided for you. And here you can just select. And of course, what's available here is going to depend on the extensions you've got. So I've got analytics and I've got the maintenance extension on here. So they've become available. What I do like, but I haven't tested is you've got show or hide for all, but then you have got hide if empty. So I'm assuming those sites that haven't got any data, it's just going to hide that section for them. So I kind of like that. That's well thought out, I thought. We've got a personal branding, just basic, where you can put in your logo and the kind of header image. And pretty much that's it. And if we go over to this, we've got the basic coloring that you can just add in here. So background color, text color, and an accent color. And I think that is about all I need to cover on this video. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope it was useful. If it was, then please do give me a thumbs up on YouTube because it gives me some indication of how useful these videos are and it encourages me as well. And consider subscribing to the channel if these are your kind of videos. 
Again, thank you. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you again soon. But until then, bye-bye.